Why, hello! Jaden just What's makes sure up? to talk That's about. Good. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so this is one of my favorite people that I've ever met at FSY. His name's Jaden Brady Armstrong. Tara is so nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just honest. So, we were actually co's our first week here at FSY in Ephraim, and I wanted to have him on to just kind of talk about our week. I'm planning on doing a separate episode of our week just talking about it, but what could be more fun than having Jaden on and talking about that week too? So, first impressions. My first impression of you was that you were super sweet looking. I was like, this is going to be fun. I remember looking at the picture on Saturday night around midnight and being like, oh my gosh, he's adorable. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> His picture's so precious, guys. I don't think you told me that one. Yeah, your picture was so precious. I was like, oh, this guy is, looks so sweet. And then when I showed up, okay, sorry, the key lady had to come save the day because I locked myself out of my room. So if that's not FSY, then I don't know what is. So anyway, and then when I showed up on Sunday afternoon, I showed up and Becca, who's our coordinator, gave us gave me my key and Jane just happened to be there. Why were you there at that point in time? Do you know? At the church. Oh, was it for the tour? Like we were right at the church? Yeah. Yeah. So I think I was just talking with Jesse. Oh, okay. So. That's probably what. Yeah. And then you came over and I was like, oh my gosh, I bet that's Jaden. And I was like, are you Jaden? And you said, yep. Or something like that. Does that sound about right? Yeah. And my first impression was you were excited to see me. Yeah. So that made me happy and then yeah. gave me encouragement that this week was going to be good. Oh, so. yeah. And then if we're going further into first impressions just later that day... We were separated after, I mean, like, they had break in the meeting, and we were going to co-plan. And rather than jumping into planning like I always do, Jane was like, tell me about yourself. And I was like, what? <laughs> I don't know. I've just never, I don't think I've done that before in that kind of way. And so then we kind of talked. The funny thing, though, was that I asked Jaden about himself, and he was like, uh... So, <laughs> that cracked me up. Every time he had a question for me, I'd answer it. Then I'd ask the same one back, and he he just, he didn't have a quite you didn't have an answer. See, I put, Jaden is funny. Let's see, I wanted to work with the kids. As I was talking, Jaden was attentive and listening. He said, wow, this is good stuff a few times. It made me smile. He's amazing. Our goal was to be unified that week. One heart, one mind is our company name. Jaden snatched my phone and took a selfie when I wasn't looking. It was so cute and funny. <laughs> we walked over to throw the trash out and Jaden threw it right over the bin. He had to go in the little area to retrieve the bag. We uh, were just having a good time. You know? We really were. Our co-ship name, do you want to share what our co-ship name was? Giggle Giggle JK. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I don't know, we were just like laughing. And yep, we were just having a good scared. time. So it was a huge blessing because I had struggled a little bit the week prior and so Jaden just made everything so much better. And I'm not normally a caller. I mean I am but I'm not. At FSY I'm like let's just text. I don't want to waste like 10-20 minutes talking about our day. Let's just text. But every time Jaden called I was like oh, I gotta answer this because it was just so fun. And then also his boys were in Snow Garden which is where I was last week. And so he was outside, not inside like I was, and he would just lay on the cement sometimes, and it was awesome. Wait, we were actually in Pine Tree. Oh, you were in Pine yeah. Tree? That's right. This last week I was in Snow Garden, but yeah, the first week. Well, yeah. you still had to be outside to see lights, though, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Pine Tree apparently is the worst of them all, is what I've heard. It's not bad. I, <laughs> you know, there's a place to sleep. <laughs> it's a place to sleep. Like a missionary apartment. Oh, Yeah. Oh, so you were excited, or I was excited, and then that was it, really. What was your initial impression about Sunday night? And, well, I don't know. I just don't think I was worried about anything. Yeah. So. That sounds accurate. That was really cool. Yeah, I didn't feel, I just felt excited. Yeah. And to be honest with you, this sounds bad, but all my family and friends are listening. Every time people are like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this week, I'm always like, Eh, let's just get started and then I'll be excited. But I don't normally have s super big feelings of excitement on Sunday. They normally come when I meet the kids on Monday. Mm -hmm. And so that was rare for me too, actually being excited. 
I don't know like what your thoughts were, but I just feel like we both wanted to be there. Yep. We both cared about what the other person was saying, and so we had that unity to start off with. Very true, very true. I totally agree with that. And it was just a big blessing for me, honestly, because I had a hard week before, and so I was really, really grateful. Heavenly Father's looking out for me. That's that's all I know. I'm just looking through my notes. I just would like to stay, stay. I would just like to say that for this week of FSY, Ephraim week one, I have 4,053 words in my notes, which is crazy. Crazy. Okay, so that's first impressions. That's Sunday night. On Monday, we were trying to come up with our chant. And it was funny because we were trying to come up with it. And I was trying to say we are of. And I was like, we are we are of because I messed up. And Jane was like, ooh, I like that. And I'm like, you like the mess up? Like, we are, we are of? And he was like, yeah. And I at first couldn't hear it until he kind of did it. And then I could hear it. So you want to? Yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, she questioned that. And then yeah. I was like. We are aware of. And yeah. It sounded like. Um, it was kind of a vibe. Fun. Yeah. Because I was like, we are, we are so of. I'm like, that doesn't flow. But instead it was like, we are, we are of. And it was just fun. And then he said that. And I said, okay, okay. Because I really liked it. And then he's like, oh, I like that too. <laughs> Let's put that in there. <laughs> so our chant, if you want to hear it, is. We are, we are of. One heart. We are, we are of. One mind. Okay, okay. okay. One heart. One mind. One heart. One mind. We heart. are, we are of. One heart, one mind. <laughs> it was Woo. so fun. Yeah. So our kids loved it, and <laughs> it was really easy to memorize. So I'm glad about that. Really quick, Brother Wright, he was our session director on Sunday, said, Loving the lovable is easy. Loving the unlovable is what makes us celestial. And honestly, I don't think we had any kids that were unlovable, but I, like, knew what he meant. But that really kind of stuck to me just in general with FSY kids because I feel like sometimes youth do not want to be loved. They refuse to be loved, if that kind of makes sense. They're like, I don't want you to love me. I don't want to make connections. I just want to go home. And then you're like, well, uh, 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 we'll see about that. <laughs> yeah, or even them, like, loving the other youth in their groups. Oh, true. Yeah, I know, true. Because sometimes... Like I said, sometimes it's just hard to make those connections, especially when they think, oh, you're just doing this because that's your job to do that. But you're like, no, I genuinely care about you. So that was kind of, that was kind of interesting. I loved Meet Your Company. I feel like it just went really well. Do you have anything to add for Meet Your Company? I've never done this before, but Kyra was like, okay, so you go with the girls mm-hmm. and get to know the girls, and then I'll go with the guys and get to know the guys. Because mm-hmm. we had... You know, you start off with just, you know, I'm with the boys and Kyra's with the girls. But when we got together with the whole company, we, like, first switched. Mm -hmm. And that helped. I've never, like, known so many names on the first day. Yeah. And, like, what they like to do. And that helped throughout the week. Yeah. Did you do that the next week or no? No, I did not think of that. That that would be good. Maybe you can do that this week. That's a good idea. I have insisted on that every single week because... I really want to get to know the boys' names, and I cannot do it unless I am up front asking them their name again and again. It's hard for me to remember names if we're just, like, playing games and I'm like, what's your name? Because I just forget it. But if I'm, I don't know if this is the right way to say it, but if I'm in charge and I'm, like, standing up front, I'm like, okay, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Then I can learn them. But if I'm not doing that, then it's really hard for me, and so... That's just something I learned about myself last year, and so I was like, I'm going to do that this year, and it worked out really well. So, yeah, and like you said, it helped you remember the girls' names, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Because we did, we played a game, and we went around in the circle, and both Jane and I got everyone's names, so it helps a lot. If you're ever a future FSY counselor, that's something that I would recommend. You meet your girls that meet your counselor, and you get to know them, or you meet your boys, and hopefully you learn their names, or you try your best. And then when you meet your company, it's like, okay, how am I going to get to know the girls? Or how am I going to get to know the boys? And so I've just always asked my co if we could switch for a few minutes and just hurry and get to know the boys or the girls or whatever. And that has been super, super helpful for me. So I'm extremely grateful for that. In my notes, I said that we had the best home evening I've ever had in my whole FSY career. I feel like we debriefed some of the games really deeply. And we got into it. Like, we had a Friday-level spiritual night on Monday. Do, yeah. Do you know what it, I'm talking about? Definitely. 
we talked about the Savior and the kids were, oh my gosh, our kids that week were so attentive and so in tune and so respectful. They were just listening to everything we had to say. And it's awesome. Yeah. I remember one time Parker said five years and I thought he said five tears. And so that kind of became like a funny thing. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. Five like, tears later. Yeah. He's like, five years later. <laughs> like, five tears? What? <laughs> anyway. Was it, was it was that how he hadn't felt the spirit in five years? Or? To be honest with you, I don't remember at all. I don't all. remember exactly. Yeah, I don't remember. It was just on, it was on Monday we were talking about it. So Whatever yeah. happened, it was just really good. The spirit it was, was so there. good. It and was. The spirit was with the kids. Like, they yeah. were sharing things, and I was like, well. Yeah. Yeah, they were, I was like, wow, this week's going to be good. We also tied it back to Jesus Christ a lot. We did, we did. And I remember Jaden was a little bit concerned with us talking too much. And I totally get that and understand that. I'm also just a huge storyteller. And I feel like you kind of picked up on that midway through the week. Would you say that is the case? Maybe not? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me state that so that maybe makes more sense. I totally like being learner focused and having the kids share stuff and learning from them. I also feel like setting the ball for the Holy Ghost can be sharing stories so that they can feel the realness and the applicableness of it. Absolutely. Like I got a note from one of my girls this last week that said, I loved the short the stories. I loved the stories you told because they made the gospel applicable and real. And so that's kind of something I remember I shared about how Heavenly Father knows more than just our names. And that was on Monday. And the youth said, or a few of them came up to me and said, hey, I really enjoyed that. Because that's just not something you think about all the time. And maybe that's a question that a lot of you don't know they have, which is kind of the theme of that week for me a little bit. Hmm. Anyway, I'll go more into that later, but not in this episode. Ha 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 ha. Anyway. One of my favorite things on Monday is that, one, we worked really, really well together. But two, sometimes I just make eye contact with our youth and just smile at them. And it was so enjoyable for me. Do you do that very often? Not consciously, but I generally... Yeah, I'm sure you do. I just, I notice that when we're waiting for an answer or it's just kind of quiet for a minute and I just kind of look around at the youth, Um, I'll smile at them. Okay, yeah. And every once in a while, I think it's funny, and I wink at the boys. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Did you know that I did no. that? <laughs> it's really fun. And sometimes <laughs> the boys give me a look, and I'm just like... But I smile at them and keep looking around. But yeah, it's it's so fun. So yeah, one thing that did frustrate me about Monday was that we had to move spots, because another camp was having a dance randomly. Yeah, that was odd. Do you remember that? And it was weird because it obviously wasn't FSY approved music. So it was like... I think we moved like twice. We did the games like on oh, the concrete yeah. and then we moved over to the grass. No, you're and right. And then like in the middle of setting one of the goals. Yes. You're right. Company, we moved like again. You're right. I 100% remember that. So. Yeah. But the kids were so good. They were just yeah. like, okay, they just grabbed their stuff and they just went. So I loved that. I just would like to state, I've stated this before, but I just want to let you know. When we call you kids, and when I call you kids, it's a term of endearment. I would rather say my kids or your, you know, our kids or whatever than say our participants. So I just say kids as a term of endearment. I know some of you are 17 and 18, and you're like, I'm not a kid, and that's fair. But for me, you're my kid because that's just a term of endearment for me. So just want to hurry and state that. Anyway, how was your R&R night one? Okay, real quick though. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, no, for the, sure. Okay, I I texted you this. Okay, I just you were very very in tune with the spirit with just saying hey, you know you like share <laughs> this, yeah. and it was like they were ready to share when you called on them for the most part. But it just felt good. It felt right. Like when you would mm-hmm. ask someone to say something when it was quiet yeah. and no one was sharing. I have gotten a lot more bold with that. Last year, it scared me to do that, and I wasn't sure if I should or could or whatever because I didn't want to make the youth uncomfortable, but I learned towards the end that I could do that, and most youth were okay with it, especially if I followed the Spirit and they, you know, the Spirit was like, they're ready. So, anyway, and Jaden was so nice. We were just sitting there for goal setting, and I was like, hey, do you want to pick some people? And he was like, you're in tune with the Spirit, so why don't you... Which was just really nice of you to say, so thanks. I remember that. I wrote that down, too. 
Back to R and R. I don't quite remember exactly the how it went, mm-hmm. but I feel like it was pretty good. Probably. Probably pretty good. Yeah. I just the reason I ask is because I wrote R and R was awesome. Several of the girls cried and I did too. <laughs> And I said the silence was palpable in the room, and one of our girls could not stop laughing about it. Oh, I also wrote Jaden literally being half asleep on the phone. <laughs> oh, did we talk that night? Yes. So, yeah, so we called after. Yes, and it was funny because you were sitting on the couch, and I w- we were trying to talk, and I just couldn't understand <laughs> what you were trying to say. <laughs> Sometimes when it gets late. You yeah. Know. No, as of an episode of my counsel, you're like going, going, going. So, no, I totally get that. Okay, let's just skip. Let's see. Oh, so I went to Walmart on Tuesday, and I asked Jaden if he needed anything. And he was like, yeah, I could. Lo- I would love some toothpaste. And so I was like, okay. Like travel size. Yeah, travel size toothpaste. So I got him some and gave it to him. And the next day, he gives me this toothpaste box empty. <laughs> I'm like, Jaden, are you kidding? You want me to throw this away for you? And I'm like opening it up. And at first I see this little paper in there. And I think it's one of those like instruction papers. Do you know what I'm talking about? (laughs) Do you face having instruction? I don't know. That's what I thought. Honestly, in reality, Jaden just wrote a little note that he was grateful for me. And that he was proud of us as a co-ship. And I literally thought he handed me trash. (laughs) And I was like, Jaden, you're joking right now. And you're like, read it later. And I'm like, oh, sorry. So that was really sweet, but it made me laugh pretty far. (laughs) It was really, it was fantastic. Another thing that I loved about you, love about you, is that you were always taking care of the trash and taking care of things. We would just be walking around campus, talking about our kids, talking about planning, and you would just bend over and pick up trash as we were walking. And it was just super admirable, and I loved it. I was like, wow, Jaden is taking care of Heavenly Father's Earth right now, and that was cool. I just feel like one of the principles I learned pretty recently, not it was like last summer, but um, it's to like, and it doesn't happen all the time, like sometimes I'll skip over things, uh, mm-hmm. and later I'm like, I feel like I should have done that, but like never miss the opportunity to, to do the next best thing. Mm-hmm. I love that. So. That makes me think of <laughs> Frozen 2, the next right thing. <laughs> mm. Do you know what I'm talking about? That song but that Kristen Bell sings? No. That's a, that's okay. <laughs> I watched it once. That's okay. I also have a good memory, which is fun, but also interesting. Okay, really quick, I just wanted to touch on this. So, at training on Wednesday, not training, we had a meeting, and they wanted to do training on critical situations. And I didn't like that. <laughs> I feel like I have enough critical situations in real life that I don't want to have to deal with them pretend if I don't have to and so when we did them I started getting a lot of anxiety started getting anxious I started fidgeting and afterwards I was panicking like internally I was panicking a lot and Jaden was asking me how I was doing and I just was kind of shutting down and it was just kind of hard but I feel like even though it was kind of tricky at first and kind of hard at first it actually helped our co-ship a lot eventually even though it was hard at first. And I got really, really vulnerable, and that scared me, because I don't like being vulnerable. And I say that because I'm like, embrace imperfection, but there are some things for me that are not vulnerable. Being vulnerable with the spirit, or like sharing my testimony, or crying because I'm feeling the spirit, or crying because I'm passionate about something, don't feel vulnerable about that at all. Not even a little bit. But there are certain things that I am vulnerable about, and that was one of them. And so Jane was awesome with it, though, and very kind and supportive and then it was kind of we kind of were trying to finish our conversation and we couldn't because then the kids all showed up so then it was just like this awkward like oh shoot we still need to talk but then we were able to talk a little bit at game night which helped a lot and then we saved a piece of pizza and talked over facetime which also helped a lot so anyway i just wanted to touch on that and say that i was really grateful of how just i don't know helpful you were Jaden. so thank you that was one of the most memorable in general, the most one of the most memorable weeks of the summer, but mm-hmm. like also that day specifically, that event, mm-hmm. because we were talking afterwards, like in, after R and R and lights out, I think mm-hmm. it was, and we we're just talking about how much FSY like having a co mm-hmm. partner is like marriage prep. It is, and it was super cool. Yeah. And we realized that how to rephrase it is you don't 
Well, it's kind yeah. of like an arranged marriage, and you yeah. kind of have to figure out how you're going to connect and get through conflicts and hard times together. I mean, you literally have kids together. Yeah. <laughs> you literally do. Together. And so it was a great opportunity for conflict resolution. Yeah, I thought that's what that was. Because we, we had been super, like, yeah. unified and super, like, mm-hmm. communicative with mm-hmm. each other. So we were comfortable around each other, and we had gotten pretty close um, in that regards and have worked well together up to that point. And mm-hmm. we feel like, this is something like I thought at least, was when we got that close, it's because of that closeness that we had that experience. Of, I like, agree. I agree. I never, ever, ever would have opened up to someone like I did open up to you if we didn't have that unity. Like, it never would have happened. I just wouldn't have done that. And so I definitely agree with that, that because we were such good friends and because we were so unified, I had kind of let my boundaries and my walls down a little bit, and that's kind of why that all happened. But it was kind of scary and not super fun in the moment. And also, this summer, I've started, like, yelling. (laughs) It's not like a scream or yell. It's more like, ah! Anyway, I did that a lot because I was panicking and freaking out. <laughs> and Jane was like, I don't know what's happening right now. It's like a silent scream. <laughs> yeah. I continued doing that this last week. And one of my boys was like, I disagree. And I was like, oh yeah? And then every time I yelled after that, I was like, do you disagree? And he'd say, always. And it was just really funny. But anyway, yeah. So I definitely was freaking out and kind of screaming a little bit. Not like super back screaming. It's more like, ah! And it was just tricky, but yeah, I think the conflict resolution was really cool. And I totally agree that being a co with someone at FSY is kind of like good marriage practice because there's stuff that you have to go through that's hard and you have to figure out how to work through it because you're stuck with the week, you know? It's not like you can just ditch and be like, okay, it's Wednesday. I really want to be your co anymore. Goodbye. You know, you got to figure it out Yeah. for the kids. Absolutely. So, yeah. Anyway, that was awesome. Thursday was really good. I feel like we had... No, not I feel. I know. We had a solid testimony meeting on Thursday. It was solid. Here, one of my roommates came in, and so we paused it and started again, and that's kind of why we jumped topics. We FaceTimed for an hour and a half, and all he was doing is basically just listening to me (laughs) talk and tell stories, and it was so nice of you. Do you remember that? Yeah, Lizzie Ben. Honestly, I'd be surprised if you forgot it. Like, I enjoy, really? I enjoy listening to, to people and understanding. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, it was really sweet because Jaden said that he was surprised that I've never been asked out. And then he said, he told me that some guy's going to treasure me someday just like he treasures his girlfriend, which is like literally the sweetest kind of thing ever. So, yeah. Jaden has a missionary, and it's adorable, and I love it love it so much. But yeah, he said, someday someone's going to treasure me like he treasures treasures his, his girl, which is, once again, very kind. We also talked about, what's, what else did we talk about? Oh, it was like 1.30, and so you were like, see you later today. And I was like, today? And you were like, yeah, it's like 1 a.m. And I was like, ah! <laughs> Just like that. I yelled just like that. Yeah, like that's that. that's exactly what kind of happened. Okay, let's see. Oh, Jaden at one point asked me about the gift of discernment, and so we kind of talked about that a little bit. And I told him because he was like, so I'm just confused as to like when I feel the spirit then. And I told him it's different for everyone. And that kind of seemed to make sense to you, I think. But I said that how you receive promptings and how I receive promptings are different, and that's okay. And so when you brought your special book, he brought this book called You Are Special. I'm sure you've read it about Punchinello. And I ended up reading it to my girls this last week. And two of them told me that it was super, super special to them. So I think that was really cool. And that was an inspiration. That was inspired that you brought that. Yeah, I was just interested how... Because I had noticed, you know, like we said earlier, Kyra could really pick out... I could tell she was being guided by the Spirit, you know, who to call on, or just different promptings to do different things during the day. And I feel like there's times when I have similar experiences, and then times and seasons where I just don't feel mm-hmm. that super, those promptings yeah. so readily. Yeah. And so I was like wondering, like, huh, what's the difference? 
it was, where does that come from? Yeah. yeah. It was a great conversation. Yeah, it was. It was really cool. And it was especially cool after we had kind of, I don't know if dissonance is the right word, but we didn't, we had kind of a miscommunication on Wednesday. And so it was really cool to have like a super cool, powerful conversation after that happened. Just briefly, we fasted for five of our kids and that was a really cool experience too especially because during the meal times when we were you know supposed to be eating we practiced our song that we sang for them which turned out to be so good that was so good so good so let's see what else oh we'd practice our song it sounded really good there needs to be an fsy movie absolutely that could be a whole episode though and we don't need to touch on that but there needs to be an fsy movie I feel like our company taking it home was so powerful and so cool. I freaking loved it. What did you have about our company taking it home? Yeah, it was great. Everyone was just crying. It was yeah. crazy. Most of them were crying. Yeah, they and were. Even even our 18-year-old boys. I don't know. Yeah, oh yeah. So Carter was just looking up as Kyra. I was looking at Carter as you were speaking. Uh-huh. I was like looking up and kind of bawling. Like, he it looked was. like, and it was. I was like, wow. And then that's when like the spirit started hitting me. Is when I saw him just like really feeling it. Yeah. Um, Especially because just a little bit earlier than that, we were like, "So, are you gonna cry?" <laughs> and he was like, "Eh, we'll see. Probably not." <laughs> and then he did. <laughs> and here's the deal. I think when guys cry because I think when guys cry because they're feeling the spirit, it is one of the most admirable coolest things because they are willing to be vulnerable and they are willing to cry because they're feeling the spirit i think what it is too is they are letting the spirit either into them or they're sharing something yeah that's being guided by a spirit yeah so it's really cool i think it's really admirable and i think it's not embarrassing at all and it's unfortunate that nowadays men crying when they feel the spirit is sometimes looked down upon. And I don't think it is as much as it used to be. I feel like a lot of people think look down upon it for some reason. No, I think so too, and it's unfortunate. Like to, them, to themselves. Yeah. Get up to the very test they're like, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm crying. Someone told, I th- it might have been, I don't know, someone said once, don't be sorry if you're crying while you're bearing your testimony or whatever. Yeah. I told my kids, because it's something I heard in one of my psychology classes, that tears are a sign of truth. Huh. That you hit that normally huh. when you're crying, it's because you're hitting something that's real. Hmm. And obviously that's not the case for actresses and actors or whatever. But yeah. when you're crying because you're feeling the spirit, it's because you're hitting something true. Or when you're hitting something that's super vulnerable and you're crying, it's because it's something that's real. And so I always tell my kids that I'm like, guys, it's okay to cry. It means you're. It means they're tears of truth, mm-hmm. and it means they're real to you. Long story short, it was really cool, and we had a really really bittersweet goodbye honestly i think the depressing goodbyes is when people are like okay bye the joy filled ones are when we are sad to say goodbye that means we did something right that means we had connections and friendships and relationships overall it was a freaking awesome 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 week do you want to add anything Jaden? i just learned so much i learned so much from kyra i learned a lot from our kids Mm -hmm. and from the spirit and from the classes. Mm-hmm. I was spiritually enriched. Yeah, was I was too. Incredible. I was too, for sure. And the thing is about me following promptings and stuff, is that's not always the case. I think it's just enhanced a lot during FSY for me. I definitely think it's still a thing when I'm not at FSY, but it's 1,000% enhanced when I'm here, which is really cool. That was my goal beginning of the summer, is to be in tune enough with the Spirit in order to follow promptings. Last thing, in church today, someone said, it was Amy Sue, she was talking, and she said that when we speak to God, it's easier for us to discern when God is speaking to us. And I thought that was really cool. When we spend time with him, when we pray to him, it is easier to tell when he is talking to us. And I feel like that's kind of been the case with me this summer. Any final thoughts? I just think to whoever listens, it's a process. Yeah. Life is a process. It is. So you'll have these moments of, spiritual enriching yep. highlights or you feel like you're on the top of a mountain and the purpose of those in life i feel like is so that we gain perspective we learn more about who we are yeah we can look upon our past 
with hope for the future because we're at a high place. Mm-hmm. And we feel positive, we feel uplifted and encouraged to go forward. Then there's always another valley to walk through. There's always another yeah. downhill, but there's always another uphill. So like yeah. there's just, you'll keep growing and whoever's listening, just keep going. Well, and hopefully it's our kids. So kids, we love you. Yeah, we love you. We do. We really do. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Hey, kids, this is a message to you. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget to embrace imperfection, find meaning, satisfaction, and joy from the journey. I'm Kyra. And I'm Jaden. And this is Imperfectly, Imperfectly Broken, Broken, the, the podcast. podcast. Do, 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 do.